and welcome. In this film, I'm going to be speaking to Marika Fashuren about the importance of having and sharing evidence-based approaches to combating COVID-19. Hello to Marika. So we need evidence-based approaches to tackling COVID-19 effectively, from understanding transmission to how best to exit from lockdown. So can you summarise the kind of data that's needed to tackle the pandemic and indeed to help save lives? First of all, we need information on the virus itself and how it affects the human body. This kind of information informs the development of vaccines and treatments. Next, we need information about the transmissibility and the impact of COVID-19 and on healthcare and public health capacity to inform outbreak management and exit strategies. There's also a need to look at the wider effects of the COVID-19 outbreak. Think, for example, about the health consequences of the economic crisis that is now emerging due to the mitigation measures. Uh, think about the mental health effects of the mitigation measures. Uh, increases in domestic violence due to home confinement and the effects of uh, missed or postponed care for non-COVID related conditions. And uh, finally, there's also a need for um, policy evaluation studies to formulate lessons learned uh, that we can use to inform uh, future policy making in case of new outbreaks. So what good practice and innovative approaches have we seen during this pandemic, which have been involving sharing data and information? Well, we see a lot of examples of um, organizations and people sharing data and information and also improving the accessibility of data and information. And uh, an illustrative example are the online data sharing tools that are being used by researchers to share information on the genome of the virus's uh, strains. And this allows the researchers to track the evolution of the virus in real time. Uh, another example we see is that many associations and publishers uh, make all the COVID-19 related papers um, accessible, open access. We also see several journals that are fast tracking COVID-19 related submissions and researchers that are making available preliminary research results, all to make sure that uh, all new insights are made publicly available as quickly as possible. There's a lot of disinformation around, so what can be done to make sure that trustworthy sources dominate? Yes, in fact, a lot of mis- and disinformation is out there. Um, the World Health Organization calls this the infodemic, stating that we're not only fighting a pandemic, but an infodemic as well. The solution is not to produce even more information, but rather to guide people in their way to find reliable information. And actually there are many uh, groups in society that can and should play a role in this. So first of all, the, the tech companies, uh, the pr providers of the online platforms, they can contribute by removing content, COVID-related content that is dangerous for people, as well as increasing uh, resources for fact-checking. Citizens themselves um, can, play a can play a role by being critical about the sources of uh, social media uh, messages. And governments can support citizens, citizens in this by providing tools such as checklists or tips and tricks. And um, finally, health authorities have an important role to play by ensuring that the information they make available is easy to understand and relevant for the daily lives of people and as well as easily accessible. Thank you, Marika. And thank you all for watching. Goodbye.